Hello friends! How are all my sexy friends doing? It's Shara and I am back from New Zealand and I returned here on Monday. It's Friday now and um, I've had a bit of a rough time of it. It was a, an arduous journey back and um, I haven't had that problem before. Um, I've always traveled you know very well and it uh, no jet lag or anything but for some reason this time I don't know if it was the time of day that I left or what but I was definitely um, not feeling it I actually had to go to the hospital on um, on Wednesday and uh, be evaluated but uh, all is good and uh, I finally am not feeling uh, so sick and um, I feel like I've gotten my uh, rest and myself back to normal. Um, anyway, I sure missed you guys. I actually haven't even been coloring um, much for the last two weeks. Um, spending time with the grandkids and really focusing on that before uh, I was leaving. I did color quite a bit of pictures while I was there, but um, it just really needed to be... Um, put on the uh, back burners while I was, um, you know, finishing up my time there. Uh, two and a half months came by and went so quickly and I was um, so sad to leave. Um, it's tough and um, I will be going back soon, but um, that doesn't ease the pain of being gone. So anyway, I was happy to be back and see my 22 year old. He turned 22 while I was gone um, and my puppies, my three puppies. So I was happy to see that, <coughs> um, pardon, pardon me, to see them and, uh, and get back to some, you know, sort of uh, the regular kind of business that I have to do here. And, um, and I certainly missed my son a lot. And um, I was able to see my other son on the trip to New Zealand. Um, and that was fantastic. Um, you know, I just miss my kids too much. And uh, he will actually be um, here in the States in February, so that's nice. So I'll plan my next trip to New Zealand around that uh, trip that he's making here. And I certainly would love to take my 22-year-old with me next time, but I don't know if that's going to work out. Anyway, my plan is still to travel to New Zealand about three or four times a year. Um, you know, with the new baby being born, she's going to change so drastically from month to month, from day to day even. And um, I just hate to miss... Um, any of that precious time you know it's so fleeting and um and then with my um youngest grandson who just turned one he's still going to be changing quite a bit but i was able to see him uh five times in the year since he was born and uh so i went out there four times and my daughter came here one time so i don't know that my daughter will be able to make it out here again because uh, or at least not for a while because it's a lot it's a lot to bring um you know one uh one baby and one older child um which she did when she was you know pregnant but now with two babies and one older child, um, she would have to have some kind of help. And unfortunately, her husband's not able to, to, to make the travel with her um, at this time. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, maybe she can get someone from there that can come out with her. Because I know there's lots of people here in the United States that want to see the kids and see her. And, and uh, especially with the new baby and with Yum Yum or Liam. Um, you know, growing and changing so fast. And of course, everyone loves um, Wakas or Andrew. Um, he's seven and a half and, you know, he was the only baby here for a long time. So um, we all want to see all three of them all the time, but that just isn't working out. I'm the only one that gets to see him as often as I can. <clears throat> anyway, so while I was gone, I did order the um, Jasmine Beckett Griffith um, Alice in Wonderland book. So it was waiting for me when I got home. So I was really excited about that. Um, I tried not to order too much stuff while I was gone, but of course, you know, I'm a shopaholic and uh, bought lots of stuff while I was there and bought lots of stuff here. Uh, but this was one of the things that um, 
you know, I definitely would have gotten because I have all of her other books. So I'm going to do a quick um, flip through for you. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen the flip through already. Um, I won't go real slow. And then I did start a page um, uh, in it when I uh, first got here. And I'm using the, uh, the luminance um, pencils in it. So um, let me go ahead and start that uh, flip through. Now I don't know, I haven't really researched if it's a different paper or if it's a different publisher. Um, I just want to show you the pages. It's very cute. I love it. It's got some quirky pictures. It's got some cool, you know, it's pretty typical of Jasmine Beckett Griffith. Um, she uh, she um, never ceases to amaze me with her drawings and, or her paintings. Um, and I just love them. They're very cute. I'm going to turn down this music real quick. I guess it's too loud. Sorry, I didn't realize it was so loud. Sorry. I just like to have some calming music playing. <clears throat> really cute little dragon here. Little rocking horse butterfly. That's pretty cool. I like that. So... Beautiful, big-eyed girls. Um, ooh, lots of sweets. I like that. I have looked through this briefly. I picked a page that I wanted to color and uh, kind of just jumped on in it, just trying to relax after the flight. And um, I wasn't even, hadn't even put my stuff away, and I just grabbed the book and started coloring and then kind of had to put it off because I needed to get my stuff put away. I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't going to truly relax until, you know, everything was ship shape. So I went ahead and put, <clears throat> put this aside and, uh, and haven't really been doing any coloring for the last few days. I tried, uh, to help me feel better on, um, Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, I actually fell asleep at a restaurant we were at on Tuesday. I was sitting at the table put my hand in my head in my hand and I actually fell asleep. Um, I started dreaming and everything and my son's like, mom, are you asleep? And, uh, I knew that something wasn't quite right when that happened because I'm not one to take naps or anything. And I generally can get seven hours sleep and I'm good. Um, and there was just something not right. And then the next day, um, my headache was beyond and I was so nauseous. I couldn't even, um, well, even laying down, I was nauseous, but sitting up or standing up was impossible. And um, I even tried to color to see if it would help me uh, distract me from the pain and the discomfort of the nausea, and it didn't. So that's when I finally went to the hospital. I called the advice nurse, and with my history of having a stroke, I don't take headaches or that kind of thing um, very lightly. I um, actually never had a headache when I first had my stroke or when I had my stroke um, I, I it wasn't a headache that I noticed but I was extremely nauseous so the nausea is what made me worry more than um, the headache um, and um, so I just didn't take any chances went there they think maybe I was dehydrated I had been drinking plenty of water but um, just the trip itself just took its toll and maybe I had a migraine um, there have been some stressful events that have gone on um, since my return and um, nothing major, um, you know, we're working it all out, but, uh, you know, so it could have been just a combination of things. Um, I saw this one before and I think it's funny because she's supposed to look like the, the Mona Lisa and, but she has no eyelashes and I guess I never really paid attention that that's how um, the Mona Lisa was drawn but or painted but um you know i'm just so used to seeing jasmine's girls with you know those thick you know big eyelashes like here and so it was just funny to uh to see this page here and but she definitely has the coy smile and she has the um the eyes like the mona lisa and then of course the cheshire cat with his atypical big huge smile and teeth and uh you know that wasn't the times in the uh when uh, da Vinci did the Mona Lisa, which is why everyone questioned that smile. And this is such a simple smile compared to the big old cheesy grin of the Cheshire cat. I think it's funny. Kind of a parody there. Uh -uh. Anyway, I really do like that it's um, all the artists. You know, you've got the... Um, um, 
Starry Night, sorry, could not remember. Um, and also kind of a, maybe a self-portrait um, aspect of uh, Van Gogh. So I like this. Um, I think it took a while, this is the Monet um, water lilies. Um, I think it took a while for, for me and some other people to realize that it was um, a lot of um, other artists work, kind of a rendition of that. This is the Slidely Toves, which is the uh, Jabberwocky um, uh, um, poem. I don't know, um, but that's from, I always say from Alice in Wonderland, but I think it's, um, uh, it's actually, it's one of the Alice uh, books, but it's the Jabberwocky, the Slyly Toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. I remember learning that poem. And then this is another um, uh, artist rendition of, you know, a copy of another, um, of another artist in putting, you know, Jasmine's girls. So I really like these. This is um, Alice with the Dormouse. Um, I'm coloring a different one that says Alice with the Dormouse. Um, it's actually the last page that I started coloring and this is real pretty. I like this. <laughs> She just looks like a, um, you know, psychiatrist with her tea and ready to give you some advice. Oh, this is prize. I think this was the prize. Um, not positive, but uh, something to do with the, you know, with the Queen of Hearts and all of that. I'm, you know, I love Alice in Wonderland, but I am not really up to date on, you know, all the different um, aspects of the storyline. You know, I've pretty much seen the Disney version, and I think I've read a book, but it's been quite a while. Um, but I don't really know all of the whole Alice um, stories. This is really pretty. This is more simple, I like that. And uh, her hair is kind of in a dream, sort of flowing, and she's obviously sleeping and dreaming. She looks real, real basic drawing, you know, her hand and stuff, so kind of a simple drawing. Here's the Queen of Hearts, always as ugly as ever. She's not the friendliest person in the world. Oh, I thought for a second she only had three fingers, but. She has four, a little tiny one there. That's a cute picture though. I really love this, I love her hair. It just reminds me of the 70s and, and the Farrah Fawcett look. I just love this page. And um, you know, of course she's supposed to have the effect of falling down. So um, it just poofed her hair out a little bit, but it definitely gave her that feathered look like Farrah Fawcett. I thought that was real cute. And here's Alice and the pig. That's very simple too. I really like that one too. I like that she has a little bit more um, simple uh, pages. Um, you know, I'm not all about, um, I like coloring nice, but I don't, I'm not all about the real fussy coloring and I, and I do like these uh, more simple images sometimes. Humpty Dumpty, he always creeped me out. I don't really know the story of Humpty Dumpty. Um, I uh, I just think he's a creep. And here's the smaller ones that she's had in the other books, and I really like those. If you want to do something, just a quick little picture, and you don't want to, even though they're detailed, um, you still can do them pretty quickly because they're only a, a fourth of the size of a page, so if even smaller than that. And so I really like these. And uh, there's the, uh, the caterpillar, and the Cheshire Cat, and then the White Rabbit, and then the Griffin. It's pretty cool. Cheshire, pinch stick here. And then these look like bookmarks almost, and um, I, I think these have been in the other book, at least one of the other books as well. Um, and uh, um, I wouldn't ever cut them out and use them as, um, 
as bookmarks, but uh, I think they're pretty cool because, again, it's only half of the page, and if you uh, want a little bit more than the quarter, but you don't want a full, you know, these are a nice option, and um, they're very cute. And here's some more. Alice descending down the, uh, the rabbit hole again. Her hair is a lot different in this picture than the previous one. Um, I'm not sure what this one is depicting, but um, it's cute. Looks like some sort of egg. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with what this one's about. It looks like frogs. You got a frog here, and you've got what I think are frogs and a some kind of a serpent or something. <clears throat> Again, I could be wrong. This is uh, the Mad Hatter, which I think is pretty funny to me. He looks like John Lennon. Um, and it may be a, a copy of a, of a artist, you know, rendition, and she's just input her own um, spin on it. So I'm not sure, but I just think that, you know, with the John Lennon glasses, I thought it was pretty funny. And, um, and she just looks so bored at the tea party. And I'm not sure what this one is. Um, obviously, um, you know, old, almost like Scarlett O'Hara. So I'm not sure. Again, this is probably a echo of a painting. And then here's the full Starry Night. Um, or a, a different version of the Starry Night. This is more typical with the buildings and the stars and the moon. And... Um, and then she's inserted a, a jasmine girl into there. And then here's the birds. And I vaguely remember this part of the story. <clears throat> here's a footman that, or footman that looks like a, he's a frog, I guess. And um, that's a pretty cool picture. And then here's the one that I'm doing. This is again, the Alice and the Dormouse. And uh, you've got the, um, just the squiggles, and I've decided to color these in the colors of the Cheshire Cat. Um, I don't really know. Uh, I don't usually look up her um, paintings to see what color they were painted. Um, of course, I put Alice in a blue dress because Alice, you know, typically has a blue dress, but I don't usually look up. Um, you know, this either looked like Beetlejuice, which would be black and white, or I saw it kind of as a Cheshire cat color. So I went ahead and went with that. And that's the last page, I think. Yeah, I have the, I have the, I have this folded back. So it's not in my, the, the ridge isn't in my way. So, um, and I will go ahead and get to coloring this. Get it right on camera. I don't want to have it, um, uh, Sorry, sorry for my arm. Can't seem to get that. There you go. Got it right on there. And I'll go ahead and get to coloring. Like I said, I'm using my, um, I'm using my luminance pencil, or the luminance pencils. I hate to say my luminance, but because they're pretty much the luminance. They are my set of luminance, but um, I got these just before I left, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to use them. So it's kind of nice to uh, get a chance. I, um, I actually haven't really liked the luminance. I haven't been um, able to find where I really think that they work. Um, I tried them in the um, um, in the Momo Girl, and I absolutely hated them. I did not think they worked at all in Momo Girl. Um, I've heard some people say that they work great in the um, Amazon paper or the Create Space paper. Um, I just can't justify using a very, very, I mean, this is probably the most expensive um, set of pencils if you go by um, per pencil. Uh, even over the Holbein's, even though the Holbein's may be more expensive for the set, they come with 150, where these only come with, um, I can't remember how many they come with, but anyway, they are definitely um, the most expensive that I've found, and um, I just can't justify coloring in a 
create space paper um, or Amazon paper with uh, a truly expensive pencil. So I really have only tried it um, on um, the um, Nina um, paper that Belinda uses, uh, which I haven't found the luminance to work that great. Um, and I've um, tried it in Momo Girl. I've tried it tried them in um, in this now um, they're going out down okay I don't know that they're perfect um, and it just could be that I and that's why I went ahead and bought them because I thought you know what I need to figure out how these work and and um, and just get to using them mostly I mean I don't feel like I'm a very great colorist but I, I like love it and this is my hobby and you know I like to shop and I like to try new things and um, so I went ahead and bought them and, and, you know, I'm going to use them and I will try them in some create space paper. I just, um, haven't done it yeah, or I hate to say the create space. I know it's not create space, but in the Amazon paper and the, in the more budget friendly paper, um, I, um, I had printed out quite a few things on the paper I for the life of me, I cannot um, remember what, it's It's Nina paper, but I can't remember, I think it's classic crest is what she gets, and she gets it in the, in the solar white, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't have the tag from the paper still, I'll have to look on my Amazon, um, um, I'll have to look on my Amazon order to see what it was, but I got a deal on it and I was really happy with that. Um, but um, there, you know, it, it works great on a lot of, um, a lot of, um, you know, pencils, but um, I haven't found that the luminance um, work on very many things and it's probably just my um, inexperience and, um, you know, not using them the way that they were intended. So I, I try to be very light-handed and um, and uh, do layers instead of you know putting down a lot of color at once. But I can see here in the blue that I did, um, I had to erase and kind of um, fix it up. I um, I wasn't uh, too happy with it. Now they're also a very fat pencil. They have very fat. Um, uh, core and so I do find that I want to keep them ultra sharp because I do um, uh, make a lot of mistakes going out of the lines um, with the, the fatter pencil you know the le my left hand is not my dominant hand um, but when I lost the use of my right hand I had to switch to um, my left and um, and there are a lot of things, I mean, I can, I, I'm very happy with my abilities, but some things are, sometimes it'll like get out of control, it'll get away from me, and, um, and I'll go out of the lines, or I just don't have the precision that um, I, you know, I would have had with my, um, with my, you know, dominant hand, with my, the hand that I used for 44 years, so. Um, you know, there's some things I just can't do with my left hand. Um, one of those being I cannot use a spatula properly. I know that sounds so silly, but I just can't get that, um, get that proper movement. And I used to be able to flip eggs without, um, using a spatula, like fried eggs would be able to flip them with just the pan. And I have done that, uh, with my left hand, which I think is quite funny that I'm able to do that but I can't flip a you know a pork chop or a or a piece of chicken with a spatula <laughs> oh it's kind of funny what your what your um, body you know what it does and it won't do and um, the uniqueness of it is pretty crazy but um, anyway I um, so like here I can see I got some blue blue is a pretty strong color so I got some in and uh, this paper, I do know if you erase too much, it'll just tear a hole. Um, at least in Jasmine's previous books, it's that way. And it seemed like it when I started to erase, it seemed like it was going to continue um, to perform that way. And so um, I didn't want to erase a lot. 
Um, so I figured, you know, whatever. I, if there's a little bit of blue in her skin, it's okay. I'll, um, you know, I'm sure I'll get over it. I mostly just wanted to color in this book and I wanted to, um, you know, try out these luminants a little bit more. So I did have a smaller set of luminance, um, and I didn't think it was enough to um, really give me an idea. And um, plus I had gotten, um, I can't remember why I had returned something or something and I had a Amazon credit and I was like, ah, I'm gonna get the luminance. So. I've also been, discovered Jackson's Art Supply and they're pretty good. Um, they, um, they have some good prices and their shipping is from the UK, but their shipping is so reasonable, um, even cheaper than what you get for shipping within the United States, you know, from some companies. Um, I think I spent um, $30, $40, and the shipping was only $1.94, which that's pretty amazing if you ask me. Um, hold on one second, I want this a little bit louder. Just some meditation music it's just calming to me um anyway i had a fabulous time in new zealand um as most of you know or many of you may know and i i posted a video on it my my first granddaughter was born on um, august 1st she wasn't due until um august 23rd so i know she came early just for um grandma's sake to spend more time with her and um her name is O Catalina, but um, the nickname that, that she's sort of adopted is Cata, but grandma calls her Chula, which means cutie or beautiful in uh, Spanish, and I just call her Chula. Um, I have nicknames for all the kids, and uh, my oldest grandson, his my husband, uh, the, the my youngest two's dad, um, we're not together, but he had named... Um, Andrew, um, and it sort of just evolved into Wakas. So his name is Wakas, and most, um, I interchange Andrew and Wakas. His grandpa, or his pa, as he's called, um, pretty much calls him Wakas, and then we've got several other family members. Some only call him Wakas, uh, some uh, only call him Andrew, and then some like me, they go back and forth. And then um, William, I uh, was talking to him one day, and I, um, I, I don't call him William because um, there's so many Williams in the family, and then actually a cousin of his is living with him now, and his name is William, so it's very confusing. So William, and I'm like Liam, and then I'm like, wow, that's like Yum Yum, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna call him Yum Yum. So. His nickname is Yum Yum, and uh, it'll probably, sometimes I call him Yum, sometimes I call him Yum Yum, um, sometimes I call him Yummy, because he is Yummy, so um, that's kind of his nickname. And then I was like, well, I have to have a nickname for uh, Kata, but because she was going to be called a nickname um, already, because O Catalina is long and, you know, a little bit more formal sounding, um, she was already going to be called Kata, and I'm like, well, I have to have a unique nickname, and I was like, I was calling her, you know, girlfriend and princess and chica, and then I came up, I, you know, I was looking at her and playing with her one day, and I said, Chula, and then I'm like, oh, I love that. I'm going to call her Chula, so yeah, it just kind of evolved, so she, but I still call her girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend, what's up? And, um and uh, uh, Chica and Princess. And I kind of think the princess thing is overused, so I didn't want to, but it just sort of came out of my mouth. And uh, so she has gotten the, the name Princess as well, but uh, all I know is she is precious. She is just, ugh. It's just something special about a daughter having a daughter. And um, my grandsons are amazing and I love them dearly, but there's, and there's a special place in my heart for all of them. And, um, you know, I always wanted a daughter. I always wanted to have and raise a daughter. Um, and I couldn't ask for uh, um, 
mean, my daughter Sabrina is more than I could ask for. Um, she's amazing, and and uh, and I love her. And you know, we've grown into being friends, which is nice. You know, it's kind of challenging when they're teenagers and certain circumstances that we went through. We did have our challenges, but. Um, you know, in the end, she knows I love her and, and, and I'm always here for her. And um, I know that she um, loves me and appreciates all that um, that um, I have stood for as far as being a parent. So um, now she's a young mom and I am a mature mom and, you know, we can be friends and um, you know, we still have our little tiffs once in a while because you know what would a mother and daughter be without those but for the most part we get along beautifully so um so i've got this first layer um it's all right i'm gonna go ahead and uh shade a little bit and see if i colored this part a little darker here because it's got the you know the hair on either side so it would be darker here and I've got this in the minutes pencil. And this one is, this is called Brown. These are so hard to read. Brown Ochre. And the one I was using before was Burnt Ochre 10%. <clears throat> burnt Ochre 10%. And then this one is Brown Ochre. So I'm just gonna use this as a, she's gonna be fair. Um, I, it will make her hair blonde, uh, just like a typical Alice. And uh, so I did, did some of these and then got bored with the purple and pink and then switched to the, um, the shirt. And before I videoed, uh, before I turned on the video camera, I was, I hadn't really decided to, to film. And so I was kind of coloring the, um, fixing the shirt and erasing and trying to use a white pencil to um, kind of um, fix some of the smudges and stuff. And, um, and, then, um, and then I decided to start on the face. So I don't generally bounce around like that, but when I was coloring the pink and purple, I noticed I was starting to not do very well, so I kind of just took a break from that. Um, I, I do find these pencils challenging. Um, um, they sharpen beautifully. They're, they're beautiful. I mean, the, uh, but I just feel like, um, I feel like I'm not, getting they don't they're not as smooth as my other pencils that I've used or the other pencils that I've used like um well my Prismacolors I haven't used those in quite a bit the Pablos I have found that I really like the Pablos in fact those are the only pencils I took to New Zealand um I did pick up a a, a bigger set of the um Faber-Castell Classics and I really like those um and it's been a while since I've really used budget pencils, budget pet friendly pencils. And, um, you know, maybe that's all I really like for budget friendly. I don't know. I, um, the first pencils I really started with when I, after I really started coloring, um, was, um, Prismas and I loved them. And then I bought the Polychromos and I loved those. And then, um, and then I got some Artesias and some, um, I really like the color soft, but I'm not buying another set of pencils. I have a small set, but I'm not buying any more, um, sets of pencils. Um, I don't need to, I have so many and, um, I am not that good and I'm not that, um, I, I just don't have the, the desire to buy pencils now. I, I just want to play with what I have. Um, I have a, quite a bit of um, art supplies. So I did buy the, uh, oh, I think that's her ear. I'll have to color that with, I'll color the inside, but I think I'll have to color that with um, the light color. Um, 
I, I did buy a couple of coloring books and I, I, I'd be fooling myself if I said I wasn't gonna buy some more. Um, and I would truly be fooling myself because, well, let's face it, I'm, I'm gonna end up buying another some other coloring books, but I'm really trying not to. I, I don't need any. I, I don't know how I'll ever color in all the ones I have, and I have way less than most people, um, but um, I have a lot of printouts because I do have PDFs, and, and I got a special on the um, um, HP um, oh, Instant Ink where um, I could get, I mean, I was able to print like over 300 pages um, for two months and I took full advantage of it. So I also have a ton of PDF printed um, books and pages on um, really good paper, the, the classic crest, um, on, um, you know, all of its decent paper. I didn't, uh, of course, don't print on, you know, just copier paper, but, um, uh, so I have that, and so, I mean, I literally have way more than I could ever color, and, um, and I've got to start just coloring what I have instead of buying more. Um, it's not about a, um, you know, cost thing. I'm not spending money I don't have or anything like that. It's that, you know, I, I do believe in, in excess is, is, you know, bad. I don't want to keep contributing to all this, um, stuff that may never get used and I will uh, feel bad about it, you know. Of course, I could um, send things to other people in need and, and absolutely if someone needs something, maybe I will have some extra, I can do that. But um, for right now, I'm, I'm just going to slow down my purchasing and, and, um, and focus on what I have as I sit here and color in a brand new book. <laughs> Oh well, so I like this. So I think the uh, the color is right. I don't know if it's right on the camera. Let me look. I could come in closer, but um, well, she looks kind of pale, doesn't she? I can come in a little closer. You can see what I see there. I'll keep uh, doing. I'll do her eyes next. But um, I'm happy with this. The colors. So let me darken up right here. I do have to stand up to see if I'm in frame, so I hope I'm not out of frame. And um, so anyway, that's my goal, is to not purchase any more supplies. Um, I, I, I honestly can't imagine that I need a single thing. Um, I have, I have enough. I, I'm not gonna say I have excess. Um, it's not like I have boxes unopened or, um, I do have some coloring books, of course, that I haven't colored in, but um, um, I've tried to color at least one page in uh, all my books. Um, this sounds like a Christmas song. Um, anyway, I, um, just lost my train of thought. That's what I get for talking. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to color what I have and play with the supplies that I have. Um, I, I bought a couple of things before I left um, and, and I'm good. I mean, I seriously have what I need um, to, to play with, to have fun with, um, to always have something different. I, you know, I really do. And um, that's not really what this channel is about. I'm not about, um, you know, showing supplies and all of that. I'm really about coloring and chatting, um, keeping you guys company. If you're coloring, um, I like to watch color and chat channels. And uh, so I thought, well, you know, I could do that. I am still going to be doing the forest bathing. Um, I did it several times while I was in New Zealand, and, and we, don't, we didn't travel much. I mean, I wasn't there to see the, the sights of New Zealand. I was there to visit my grandkids and my daughter and my son-in-law. But um, we did go to a couple places, and so I did um, forest bathe while I was there. The connection wasn't that great, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I did have some people show up on, um, 
on my lives and I really appreciated that so that was fun and uh, New Zealand is a, is a remarkable country and um, and I just love it um, of course I love America it's not that um, but you know I have one son in Australia and one or my only daughter and my only grandchildren in New Zealand and I'm all the way on the other hemisphere with my 22 year old who probably would just go if I went you know, I, I wouldn't have to worry about that um, I think he would go to be closer to his brothers uh, his brother and sister um, anyway he's um, he's a pretty cool kid and um, oh I forgot up here um, so if ever I have a chance to move to New Zealand, I'm sure that's what I'll be doing. But uh, I think I've talked about that probably, probably several times on this channel. I just forget what I talked about. <laughs> I'm kind of a nut, I know. Um, and uh, so yeah, I'm gonna focus on coloring what I have and um, you know, we'll be spending a lot more time coloring and, and um, making videos and, and even forest uh, bathing. Um, I have lots of places around San Diego that I can forest bathe. And um, just like there's lots of places in New Zealand. And um, I would just have to get a better um, internet connection when I'm in New Zealand because the, the internet was a little shaky and I was using my daughter's hotspot. But you know, they, they definitely, um, in the small, small town that they live in, you know, they don't have, um, you know, near what we have here, like in San Diego or anywhere here in California. We're going to have much, um, you know, much more um, advanced uh, Wi-Fi and Internet. So we don't have those connection problems. So anyway, um, let me go ahead and do her eyes. I think her skin looks okay. I'm going to see how it looks in the video. See if you guys think. Well, I still think her face looks kind of light on the um, on the video. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should do her face in the. I don't know. I'll go ahead and keep it. You know, things always look different when you put the hair in the eyes. I'll keep it where it's at. It doesn't look that bad um, in person. And let me grab something for her eyebrows. Brown. <clears throat> Again, I like them very sharp, especially for that small, um, narrow eyebrow. Um, I use the um, the deli. I don't know. Let me see if it's on camera. The deli um, um, sharpener. I love it. It's great. Um, you can do either a, um, a long point or a short point. And um, I've been able to sharpen any pencil that I own in there. And um, it gets a really nice um, sharp point. Let me see where, there we go. I don't know if you can see that. And I just did like uh, like two, two um, turns because this was already semi-sharp. Um, it was rounded at the end, but it was long, so I didn't have to um, really sharpen it, but it does get a very nice needle point to it, and that's exactly what I need for these very small eyebrow space. Probably just gonna color them in. I'm not gonna, they're pretty dark lines um, here in this uh, Jasmine Beth. Beckett Griffith does pretty dark lines, so usually on eyebrows, if they're um, a softer line on the outside, I will kind of make the hairs, uh, but these you wouldn't even be able to notice, and I wouldn't want to go out of these dark lines to, uh, to make her hairs, you know, the individual hairs stand out. That's okay. That's a good color. <clears throat> that was... Um, Mm, sepia that I use there. So I think I'm going to do her eyes and I want to do blue. Let's see. 
I think I want to do Where's my scratch paper? Here, I'm gonna test it out in here. I'm bad about grabbing out my swatches. I'd rather just, I hope you can see that. I hope I'm on camera, I know I'm pretty close up. Let's see, if I'm just close up, I'd be right about here. So that color. see that let me get it there and look oh yeah you guys should have been able to see that no problem all right so I just have to uh, I'm gonna do the dark here anyway so yes I had a fabulous time it was very hard to leave um, you know I could sit and hold that baby and play with the one-year-old and love on my seven-year-old grandson 24 hours a day. Um, and I know that um, that the baby girl, my baby girl is gonna grow up so fast. The next time I go, even if I went in three weeks, she would be drastically different. And like I've always said, thank goodness for, for, um, FaceTime and, and video chatting, I, I, I don't know what I would do without it if I couldn't see them. And um, I can just sit there on the phone with my daughter. I mean, I can be propped up and uh, just feel like I'm in the living room other than holding them. In fact, she, uh, she said, she goes, I'm gonna put you here in the baby's crib so that um, I can go change um, Liam's diaper He's still the baby too. We call them all baby. Um, so she had to change the baby's diaper, and so she put me in the uh, in the crib with Chula, and I told her that you know I was babysitting, and in fact, um, her flailing hand had she could barely touch the uh, the phone, and um, her flailing hand um, actually put me on mute, so I couldn't. Um, so I couldn't even hear her and she was chatting at me. She could see me and she was chatting, but I couldn't hear it because she had muted me. So I was yelling. I knew they could hear me. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear her. She could hear me. And she was chatting with me and, and uh, I was yelling for my daughter to come on and so, and then there was, she was doing something and uh, she had to, grab the other baby and I said well just hand me the baby <laughs> I knew it. she couldn't hand me the baby it wasn't like I really thought she could but you know it was just like I really felt like I was there and she could have just handed her over um, and that's pretty crazy that she was you know on the other side of the world and and our connection is that clear and we're talking that clear um, you know and I'm I'm feeling like I'm right there with them. So at least we have that. We did just make a straight line. All right. I am gonna go over this with the blender. So now, that's another thing, this blender, I try to leave this sharp as well sometimes because um, if you go past the line with it, it can smudge the page. And this is a very narrow line. So there we go. That looks nice. I like that. Go in here with my eraser. 
This is my go-to eraser. Um, it's the Faber-Castell um, pencil eraser. And, um, and I love it. I, um, I pretty much don't use anything else. I have the, um, the power ones that are battery operated, but I tend to always go back to this one. Um, I can sharpen it with the point, but it's the, you know, on the, I usually use the M and R and I use the fat hole because the fat hole is what makes a short point instead of a long point. If you make a long point with these, they um, it gets too floppy at the end. But if you do a short point um, with it, you can get into some, you know, some really small spaces and, um, and it stays firm with the, um, the short point. I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen it and show you what I mean. So I use the fatter hole of the M&R and, um, and I just give it a couple of turns. But this makes the short point there. As you can see, it's short, but it's sharp. I don't know if you can see that. Let me wipe away the eraser. I don't know if you can really see that, but you can see it's short, but it's not as floppy as, it still gives, so it is nice. It helps bend into small spaces, but it's a short point, and, um, and it, I found this just works the best, and, um, and I love this eraser. Um, it's what I've used from the beginning, and I think it erases um, just as well as any other, if not better, um, and I feel that it's the, um, the most convenient, and um, I think it's more thorough. I really do. Even though it's a pink end, um, it doesn't, um, it never leaves the pink color. And um, and it can, uh, I mean, it took this stray mark here, the blue stray mark. Oh, here's another one. And it, and it takes it away and it's, you know, pretty precise. I know they have another one. It's the white end, but I believe that's for ink. That's more like a old typewriter type of eraser. It's like a hard, um, harder end. See, and this kind of bends into, and it works perfect. And it took that away, and I like it. I love them, they last a long time, and uh, I think they're the best. Um, they work best for me, and they're inexpensive. So I still have the electric ones. I have both of them, I have two, so I can um, have one small and one um, regular sized. And I have a lot of uh, eraser heads, but or the bits that go inside of it. But I tend to just always grab my uh, Faber-Castell pencil eraser. I like it. Um, okay, so I am going to, I usually use, um, use ink on the um, on the pupils, but this is a pretty big pupil and sometimes the, the pit pens, because they're water-based, or I, I guess they're called pit pens, but they um, can tend to make it, um, this paper is very testy, so I'm just gonna try this, um, the Luminance um, Black. I have never, um, I mean, I've used it obviously, but I don't know that I've used it for uh, um, eyes. I, I either use the black pen or I use um, a Prismacolor black. I'm, I'm pretty stuck on Prismacolor, but for testing purposes that I'm using my luminance today, I'm gonna try the luminance black on this, um, on these pupils, so. One thing I notice about the luminance is that, and it could be the paper I'm using, is that I do have to use a blender to get the color to pop out and to fill the white spaces, um, where I don't necessarily find that with the Pablos or the um, Prismas. I mean, I'm sorry, the, um, well, yeah, the Prismas too on, the, um, on this paper seem to work good. Um, but the, um, 
polychromos. I haven't noticed that I have to use a blender, uh, but this one, I, it looks like I might have to blend that out to get um, to get it to look more black than gray. This is supposed to be just meditation music, but I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure that I've heard some Christmas music. All right, let's try this blender. Again, I, uh, I do have it at somewhat of a point. Again, I use my um, M&R for this. Um, and I put it in a, uh, a Caran Dash. This is the Caran Dash blender. And then I have a Caran Dash pencil holder that it fits in very nicely. It's actually very tight in there and um, it's hard to get out, but I can use pliers. But I, I really like the um, how nice it stays in there. It doesn't move. It doesn't push down when I'm trying to blend. See, it's actually now getting a dark black color instead of the gray. And I am giving it a firm pressure with this blender. I still don't think that's as black as I would get with the Prisma. But now that there's color down, I can add some ink to give it a nice black look because it won't, it's got that layer of wax to protect the paper. So I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get. I'm not too happy with that black on that, people. This is what I usually use, the uh, Micron. And I'm pretty sure these are um, uh, water-based. I got this in a um, in an art box. One of the I had all three of them at a time to try to see which one I liked the best. So, yeah, this is covering that. You can see this is nice and black. So so this is good. I didn't mind putting down the pencil and then going over. Um, it's relaxing to me to color like this, but now I don't have to worry about the and making a hole in the paper. I will use it on the eyelashes because I can go over those better, but this bigger space of the pupil would, could um, cause a hole and I don't want that. Anyway, there. that's way better. I like that way better. Color in these eyelashes. Give them a nice black color. So how has everybody been? Everyone staying sexy and having fun. I missed summer, which I am not crying over. I left um, at the beginning of July, so I barely had, you know, and San Diego has moderate summers anyway, but if we did have some bad summers, it's over now because now we're almost into October. And um, so I... Um, it was winter in New Zealand and uh, ended in spring, which they had snow the day after I left, which is crazy. So it is the closest country to Antarctica. And we are on the southern, or we were on the, they live on the southern island of, of um, New Zealand. So, um, so it, it gets cold and it's a different kind of cold. It's not, you know, it's not the temperatures like you get in even in the in the uh, here in in uh, United States where the states where it snows, but it's just a different kind of cold. I don't know how to explain it, but um, it's cold. I'm gonna try this this micron straight on on the on the pupil without going to the the pencil. We'll see how this works. Oh, this seems like it's gonna be okay. Sometimes this. Um, this pen will um, 
the ink won't be flowing from it and then all of a sudden it'll just be coming out and it doesn't pour out or anything but I mean it will look like it's dry 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 and then um, and then it just starts yep, see I can feel if I have to keep going over that spot it's going to um, tear the paper but that's okay I'm not gonna have to keep going feels like it might be throwing up. No, it's not. See, it, it, it's temperamental. Sometimes it wants to be inky, and then sometimes it wants to act dry and scratch my paper, which it is doing a couple of times. But it doesn't seem like it's going to tear if I hurry up. I still see some, it could be me being too picky, but I still see some light spots. All right, so I think it might have peeled up the paper a little bit right there, so I'm gonna go over it. Pencil. Sometimes I think it's just trial and error, and it's just, you know, not giving up if you don't have it the way you want it. If you're not satisfied, either walk away and come back or, you know, keep trying and, and get it the way you want it. Um, this is way better for me. No pencil goes over marker better. All right, so I think they look great. I'm gonna go ahead and get my Posca. I don't go any fancy things with the with the eyes. I you know I don't try to make them look realistic. I just like them to look pretty. And I don't you know judge people for liking to make them. Let me get this. Um, for liking to make them look realistic or to really go dramatic on them. Um, you know everyone's different. Everyone um, uh, likes to do their own thing and. I am no exception to that. I don't like the way this is coming out. It's coming out very watery. I shook it good. But, you know, being on a plane and all that, my Posca might have decided to be temperamental for me. Uh, Posca is another thing that can be um, tear your paper if you don't do it right. All right, they're not perfect, but they're fine. I'm happy with it. This one just messed up a little bit, but I'm not gonna try to scratch it or anything and, and get it off. It looks all right. I bet you it looks all right when it's on the camera. Oh yeah, they look fine. I'm going to find a light color for her lips. Mm, let's do this. Okay, friends, sorry about that. I got a phone call and my phone turned off. Uh, the video. So anyway, this is the color that I picked out. It is called mm, something pink. Anthraquine pink. Anthraquine? I don't know if that's right. I'm going to go ahead and color her lips in. It's just a natural color lips. Uh, I think I have to put it on airplane mode when I want to film because then I won't receive any calls. It's all these things that I forget. All right, those look good. I'm gonna put a, put a, um, highlight mark on her lips and I think we are going to call it a day and that be it I'll zoom out oh, zoom out for you all right I think I might work on her face a little bit it does look a little pale to me um, 
But uh, anyway, it was good chatting with all of you and telling you a little bit about my trip and what's been going on with me. And I'm hoping to really jump back in and get on, um, get on some uh, live chats and coloring chats and, and um, get back into the community because I have been pretty out of touch for a, a bit. But anyway, it was great um, spending this time with you and I look forward to doing it again. And I hope you all stay sexy and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.